Alfonso Arzate El Aquiles is a Mexican cartel boss who went from selling drugs for a comfortable life to becoming one of the most wanted drug lords on the U.S. federal authorities list. He started as a criminal who hated troubles and avoided conflicts and became one charged for violent operations. You're probably wondering how that was possible and how it ended for him. And keep watching the video to get the answer. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. Without further ado, let's begin. What's Alfonso Arzate's El Aquiles backstory? Alfonso Arzate's El Aquiles was born and raised in Colonia Libertad, Tijuana. He is the older of the infamous Arzate Garcia brothers. He was known to have started his criminal activity at the age of 30. He was quiet and reserved as a child with only a few close pals. He began working at an early age to keep out of the drug sector. He got into the transportation industry and worked there for nearly a decade. Due to some issues, he abandoned his job and joined the drug trafficking industry. He first started with minor scale operations, enough for him to live comfortably. He avoided troubles and conflicts by not participating in the plaza life or activities. However, he was friends with a powerful and famous player in the industry, which he kept a secret to keep a peaceful life. His sheltered life shattered when his secret was revealed. His friendship with that influential person became known in the industry. This didn't deter El Aquiles as he kept on going about his business. He was threatened by different people who were envious and not satisfied with his mode of operation. However, with the support of his younger brother, La Rana, a popular drug trafficker, he was still operating on a small scale. Together they fought their enemies and were known as the infamous Arzate Garcia brothers, duo of Los Aquiles gang. After a few months, he took charge of a plaza in Tijuana due to some events. He never wanted to, but he had to. This led to his acceptance by the drug dealers operating in the cartel. He became relevant and his reputation skyrocketed. He made alliances with many cartels, which includes the Sinaloa cartel. At the age of 31, he was identified as one of the alleged associates of the Sinaloa cartel charged with trafficking massive amounts of methamphetamine, marijuana, heroin, and cocaine into the U.S. He is one of the most wanted drug traffickers by the U.S. federal authorities. El Aquiles later became the leader of the Tijuana Plaza for Sinaloa's operations in Baja, California. Together with his brother La Rana, who also was his right-hand man, they run the activities of the Sinaloa cartel in that area. Through their activities, Tijuana saw a lot of violence as El Aquiles had to counter the violence brought by the Jalisco Nueva Generacion Cartel CJNG, and the Tijuana Cartel. He is known for being at the command of the wave deaths in Tijuana, about 583. El Aquiles and his brother led the drug trade on the northern border of Baja, California, making them fugitives. There have been numerous searches for them and even bounties placed on them for assistance in catching them. However, they are known to reside outside of the region despite being at the helm of affairs. They only oversee the operations there as they have someone who helps in carrying out daily operations. El Aquiles is still at large as a wanted criminal with a bounty placed on him. What made him join the drug business? El Aquiles was a reserved kid growing up, got a non-criminal job at a young age, and didn't join the drug industry until he was 30. So what made him join the drug industry considering how he was and the job he had? El Aquiles' case is like saying, you can take the animal out of the jungle, but you can't take the jungle out of the animal. El Aquiles has always had connections with the drug industry. He had relatives who did drugs and even a younger brother who started organized crime at the age of 15. He had the connections but resisted it. However, when push came to shove because of financial issues, he had to join the industry. Alfonso Arzate had connections with the drug trafficking business of meth at the time of quitting his job. He then made a friend, Enrique Jorquera Guerrero, alias El Jorquera, whom he also considered his godson. El Jorquera was one of El Cholo's trusted men who had started gaining relevance for transporting drugs and orchestrating murders. Through his friend and connections, El Aquiles became a drug trafficker, though on a minor scale. He was known to trade in a peculiar way that earned him enough to live comfortably. While doing this, he also avoided conflicts and steered clear of troubles, especially those involving the plaza. What was El Aquiles' experience as a cartel boss? El Aquiles started as a small-scale drug trafficker who was a compadre of El Jorquera and only bought drugs from El Cholo, a high-ranking lieutenant of the Ariano Felix cartel, CAF. El Jorquera was one of the trusted men of El Cholo for his relevance and contribution to the cartel. He helped the CAF gain relevance and authority in Tijuana, where they ruled and reigned until internal conflicts made them lose relevance. After the assassination of El Cholo, El Jorquera moved to the U.S. and left Aquiles in contact with El Turbo, the head of a group of sicarios. Teodora Garcia Cementel, El Teo, 
a lieutenant of a faction of the CAF, now named the Tijuana Cartel, got wind of the friendship between El Jorquera and El Aquiles and decided to target El Aquiles for it. There was a war between El Teo and Luis Fernando Sanchez Arellano, alias El Ingeniero, for dominance of the plaza. El Ingeniero is the nephew of Eduardo Arellano Felix, in charge of CAF's other faction's operations at the Tijuana Plaza. El Teo was out to get all the narcos who wielded influence in the plaza. El Aquiles tried to keep a low profile during the war, but it didn't work as he got a threat call from El Teo. He knew he couldn't handle it alone, so he contacted his brother, La Rana. La Rana was a more popular one of the duo as he was outgoing and made many friends. He was also known for being bloodthirsty, so when his brother called him for help, he was ready with all seriousness. Together they faced the threats posed by El Teo. Many issues came up afterward, but with the formation of the Band of Aquiles, or Los Aquiles, El Aquiles and his brother La Rana were able to hold out and keep going strong in their business. Lieutenant Julian Lezeola was out to get the cartel bosses in Tijuana and supported El Aquiles involuntarily in getting dominance of a plaza in Tijuana. He did this since El Aquiles' mode of operation with ways of trade was peaceful and rare compared to the likes of El Teo and El Ingeniero. El Aquiles gained his friendship and unconditional support of El Mayo, the leader of the Sinaloa cartel. This happened when he helped rescue El Mayo's niece, who was kidnapped by El Cias. El Mayo requested help from El Aquiles when he learned about the kidnapping of his niece since El Aquiles was an enemy of El Cias. El Aquiles coordinated the rescue and gained fame and power for dealing with the kidnapping and extortion. Things were quiet for a while until El Tigre, the one who replaced El Ingeniero, decided to go against El Aquiles for being more than him. El Aquiles contributed to El Tigre leaving the plaza as he made an investigation and got evidence to incriminate El Tigre. El Tigre retaliated by attempting to kidnap someone from the El Aquiles gang. The effort was futile as the person El Tigre sent became an ally of El Aquiles. From then, things started getting better for El Aquiles as many of his rivals were either arrested like El Ingeniero or killed like Jose Antonio Beltran Cabrera, R4. El Aquiles kept dominating the drug trafficking industry in Tijuana and was successful until the rise of Ulisco Nueva Generacion Cartel. CJNG. This led to lots of violence in Tijuana as either group was not giving up. The death toll increased as many bystanders or innocent people on the streets became victims in the war between them. The Tijuana cartel was also in support of the war as they were rivals of Los Aquiles. Los Aquiles had support from the Sinaloa cartel and a faction of the CAF. Conclusion El Aquiles was a drug lord with his principles and unconventional ways of running the cartel. He was loved and admired by a lot as a result of his actions. He also got support from influential cartel bosses like El Mayo and police officers and authorities in Baja California. This is possibly why he's still a wanted criminal at large, despite having an active search warrant on him. There you have it guys, I trust you enjoyed the video. Do give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and follow our social handles in the description below. See you in the next video, bye!